carries the cholesterol to the cells. So every one of your cells produces cholesterol. Now the liver produces a lot of cholesterol. And the reason that your cells produce cholesterol is because all of a sudden when a cell stops working really well, it needs its hormone. And so it sends cholesterol out saying, hey, give me back my hormone. Now, here's the, here's the thing that's important to understand. Do we want cells in charge of their reproduction so they can reproduce at will? What do we call a cell that reproduces at will? Cancer. Cancer. So do we want them in control of that? No, we have a wonderful feedback mechanism. They send cholesterol out, the pituitary, the, the adrenals, the thyroid, the, the male testes, the female ovaries, they, send, they get that cholesterol, now they make their hormones and send it back out in the blood and now those cells become happy. Okay, so we have these feedback mechanisms. That's how the body works. We don't allow anybody just to reproduce at will. It's important that that happens. And so LDL is the carrier to the cell. Okay, it's important. LDLs are not the bad guys. Now there are very low density lipoproteins that we call or categorize into that LDL section that technically are the ones that aren't so good. And we're gonna get there in just a moment. But I wanna go to the next one. HDLs carry cholesterol to the liver to go out of the body. Okay, so that's why HDLs or high density lipoproteins, the ones they call the good cholesterol, are important to have in high quantities. The more exercising you do, the higher HDLs will be. The more good fish oil that's not rancid, and it's not necessarily easy to find, but the better the fish oil and better your omega-3 fats, the better your HDLs will be. Okay? Last and, and foremost, I left the most important one. How many of you have ever heard anybody talk about triglycerides? Okay? Triglycerides tell us how much sugar you're eating. Anybody here ever eat a lollipop? Do you lick it to the very end? Anybody been able to do that? <laughs> no? <laughs> what happens the longer you lick that lollipop? What happens to your tongue? Gets bumps. <laughs> yeah. What else? Turns colors. Turns colors. Yes. How does it feel? It feels raw. Okay. That sugar is slicing up your tissue. Okay. That's what it's doing. It is. It's absolutely slicing up the tissue. And so the higher the blood sugar, guess what's slicing up our blood vessels? That sugar. Why do we have insulin? Insulin crashes blood sugar. It says, this is not good for my system. And so it's constantly driving down, down sugar. Well, once sugar drops too low because it's indiscriminate about doing that, we now have to convert our sex hormones to cortisol because cortisol is not only a stress hormone like we've talked about, but it's a blood sugar mobilization hormone. It raises blood sugar. So every time we eat sugar and grains and spike our blood sugar and crash it with insulin, we have to bring it back up with cortisol. Well, where do we get the cortisol? from our sex hormones. So I have guys and gals come in to me and they say, I don't feel very good, my libido's low, I have almost no sex drive. And I say, how much do you love grains? I have to ask them the question. I said, because I can do some things to kind of help correct it, but if you keep robbing your body of these sex hormones by eating what you want to eat, it's, it's just pouring money down an empty hole. You know, you're going to be on it the rest of your life. That's not a fix to me. But some people, I say, if you're okay with that, then, man, let's continue doing it. But as soon as I begin to lower blood sugar and regulate blood sugar, I now spare testosterone in the male body. I spare progesterone in the female body, which is your healing hormone, like our, progester or our testosterone. So we want to maintain progesterone in a female body and maintain testosterone in a male body. And if we continually are under stress and keep this blood sugar unmanaged, we now create un chaos in the human body. We grow older faster, okay, and, and things we don't want to do. You know, we'd rather be able to have sex and not feel like we can't, okay, or rather enjoy it. Because women, you have to do the same thing we do. It just looks a little different for us than it does for you. But that's all generated by sex hormones and blood sugar management. And this is cholesterol at its best. Okay? So that's how important it is. So triglycerides are the most important number I need to look at on your lipid panel. I actually cannot judge your cholesterol levels in the presence of elevated triglycerides. It's irrelevant. Hear that again. If your medical doctor is looking at your cholesterol and it's 260 
and he did not look at your triglycerides that were at 180, him putting you on a statin is actually malpractice because you cannot rightly judge cholesterol in the presence of elevated triglycerides. Why? Just for the reason we talked about. Cortisol is going up, you're under tremendous stress, and you're constantly stripping your sex hormones, and your body continually kicks out more cholesterol to try and get those sex hormones because it wants them so desperately. So is your cholesterol really high? You don't know because your triglycerides are so high. Okay? So if you look at the triglycerides numbers, it tells you the medical range is like 30 to 150, which is not reality. I'm just going to tell you. Normal triglycerides are 70 to 100. That's your goal. And any one of you in here, if we did a test today and you scored, let's say, 140 or 150 or 160 on your triglycerides and you went completely grain free, off grains, almost no sugar, in two weeks I could re redo that test and I will bet you money you'll be under 100. It goes down that fast. Wow. Now, if it's not, I have those that aren't. They have severe omega 3 deficiencies. I mean, that's just what we're dealing with typically. So in my office, you'll hear me talk a lot about low-grain diets. I'm not talking about keto. We'll, we'll do that for another talk. That's a whole can of worms on its own, and I want you to totally understand what that is because there's a right way to do keto, and there's certainly a wrong way, and there's a lot of people out there that are having gallbladder trouble, liver trouble, um, you know, cholesterol trouble, all kinds of things, and, and cancer trouble because of the ketogenic diet because they're not doing it correctly. So we will get there. I will do a, a talk on that. So triglycerides, and it says at the bottom, these four lipids make uh, these sorts of make sense that the values out of optimal range um, do with poor release of fatty acids and poor utilization. So it's going to be fatty, fatty acids that we're always going to focus on for these. How good are your are your fats that you're taking into your body? Now, what's what's the fat that we've typically eaten as a society for hundreds, if not thousands, of years? Big. Bacon, animal, lard, butter. When did high cholesterol begin? You know, in the 1920s, heart disease was relatively unknown. Doctors would come from all around to see a case of heart disease. What did they just start eating butter in 1920? You know, they just start eating lard in 1920. You know, so. I will tell you that if you feed an animal grain, they will only make omega-6 fats in their fat. And if you take that butter, or take that fat and make butter out of it, your butter isn't so good for you. So if you're getting grass-fed animals that now only produce omega-3 fats in their fat, the cows actually taste almost gamey. If you've ever had a totally grass-fed cow, it will taste gamey to you just like an elk or deer because you're tasting the omega-3 fats instead of omega-6, which is what we've all been raised on because all of our animals have been grain-fed to make them fat really fast for market. So I tell you that fats are good for you, but it's the right kind of fats are good for you, unfortunately. So when you see grass-fed butter, man, you buy it. I don't care what it costs. When I eat, every once in a while, my wife will make bread. So one time I have bread, I cut off the heel, and it's like this big and about that thick and the butter is like that thick on top of it. <laughs> I mean, it's as thick as the bread is. That's how, how I like my butter on bread. And that fresh, hot loaf coming out, slice it off, put butter on it, it's like three bites to die for it. I close my eyes, I'm like, everybody stop talking to me. I'm having my grains this month, you know? And so you learn to enjoy the sugars and the, and the grains that you love. This concludes another episode of Revealing Wholeness with Dr. Troy Munson. If you have any questions concerning this podcast or others, you can reach Dr. Munson by email at chiroman, that's C-H-I-R-O man, at dr dot com. Or you can call him at his office during office operation hours at 360-893-8586. This show is sponsored by Infinity Whole Health on the Disruptors Podcast Network. The information on this podcast from Dr. Troy Munson is meant to educate the listener on a variety of health issues. It is not meant to diagnose or treat any conditions.